Thomas's Tricky Tree. It was the winter holiday season. All the engines on the Thin Controllers Railway were very busy. Scarlowy was pulling trucks of holly and mistletoe from the woods. Mighty Mac was taking holidaymakers to the mountains. And Sir Handel was taking a special present to the wharf for the Fat Controller. It was the winter holiday tree. Thomas was very excited. The Fat Controller had chosen him to collect the tree from the wharf. He was to take it to the town square in time for the winter party. When Thomas arrived at the wharf, it was very busy. He looked for the tree, but he couldn't see it anywhere. Duncan puffed up. Are you looking for something, Thomas? He chuffed cheekily. I'm looking for a Christmas tree, tooted Thomas. Don't you know what a Christmas tree looks like? Laughed Duncan. He liked teasing the big engines. It's tall and green and pointy. Thomas didn't think this was funny at all. Duncan called out to Peter Sam. Peter Sam, Thomas needs our help. He doesn't know what a Christmas tree looks like. Of course I do, huffed Thomas. He didn't like being teased by the small cheeky engines. It made him cross. Later, Thomas met Sir Handel. Thomas, Sir Handel began, the Christmas tree is tall and green and pointy, chuffed Thomas. Thank you, Sir Handel. I don't need your help. Sir Handel was puzzled, but Thomas had already wished away. Thomas chuffed into a warehouse. Rusty was there. Hello, Thomas, he honked happily. Can I help? No, thank you, Rusty, Thomas tooted quickly. He looked around. He couldn't see the tree anywhere. Thomas was beginning to worry. Thomas chuffed into another warehouse. Hello, Thomas, whistled Scarlowy. Can I help? Thomas didn't want to be teased by another little engine. No, thank you, Scarlowy, he puffed. Then he saw it. A long, pointy load on a flatbed. It was covered in a tarpaulin. I found it, tooted Thomas excitedly. The Fat Controller will be waiting for this tree. What tree? Scarlowy whistled. But Thomas had wished away. Thomas raced out of the warehouse. But he was puffing too fast. Then there was trouble. Thomas took the wrong track. He applied his brakes hard. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. He heard the flatbed crash into the buffers. Then splash into the canal. Oh no, the fat controller's tree, cried Thomas. It's not a tree, Thomas, whistled Scarlowy. That's what I was trying to tell you. It's a load of pipes. Thomas's cheeks turned red. Sir Handel delivered the tree this morning, Scarlowy added. So only he knows where it is, puffed Duncan. Thomas was a big engine, but he couldn't have felt smaller. And he couldn't have felt sillier. The quayside cranes lifted the pipes out of the water. Thomas was worried. It was getting later and later. Thomas knew there was only one engine that could help him. And that was Sir Handel. He chuffed quickly away. Thomas had to find him and ask where the tree was. 
before it was too late. Thomas's boiler bubbled and his axles ached as he raced towards the transfer yards. He thought a handle would be there. And Thomas was right. Sir Handel was there. I've been a very silly engine, Thomas wished. I didn't want to listen to you. I thought I knew better than the little engines, but I don't. Sir Handel listened carefully. I need to find the tree, Thomas puffed, and there's no time to lose. Of course I'll help you, chuffed Sir Handel. Follow me, Thomas. Thomas's smile stretched from buffer to buffer. Sir Handel was fast, but Thomas puffed quickly after him. The fat controller would be waiting. Thomas was coupled up to the tree. Thank you, Sir Handel, chuffed Thomas. Now I must hurry. I'm sorry I teased you, whistled Duncan. Thomas smiled. I'm sorry I didn't ask for your help, wished Thomas. And he raced away. That night, the Fat Controller switched on the tree lights. They looked wonderful. The children clapped and cheered. I may be big, but I can still ask for help, tooted Thomas, and his smile was as bright as the lights. It's winter holiday time on the island of Sodor. It's very cold, but the engines don't mind. They love this time of the year when the stations look jolly in their decorations. There is plenty of work with passengers and parcels to be delivered, no matter what the weather. Driver says there's more snow on the way, said Edward. We'll soon be burning our snow plows, said James. You'll enjoy that, won't you, Thomas? teased Henry. You know I won't, said Thomas. I don't like my snow plow. Sure enough, that night the wind blew and the snow fell heavily. The next morning, the Fat Controller arrived. He told the engines they were to have snow plows fitted. And you are to collect something special from Callan Station. It's needed for the village feast on Toby's branch line. Thomas was excited about his special, but not about his snow plow. Please, sir, my plough is awkward and uncomfortable. Do I have to wear it? Everyone has to wear a snow plough, said the Fat Controller. The fitters, his driver and fireman all helped with Thomas's snow plough. We'll have to try that again, laughed his driver. Big, horrid, awkward thing, Thomas grumbled. He was much happier when he arrived at Callan Station and saw his special. It was a beautiful Christmas tree. The trees to have lights and stand in the middle of the village, said Edward. Make sure you get it to Toby safely. I will, said Thomas. Thomas arrived at Maithwaite, and Toby was very happy to see him. The villagers will be delighted with this tree, Toby said. I'm glad you have your snowplow. I can't clear the snowdrifts by myself. Thomas couldn't see there was a huge rock buried under the snow. Suddenly, his snow plough hit the rock. Bouncing buffers, exclaimed Thomas. My plough is broken. His driver tried to stop, but the broken plough hit the water tower. Cinders and ashes, exclaimed Thomas. We can't go any further, said Thomas's driver, and there's no one to help us. 
But the villagers need their tree, said Thomas. Let me try again. I'm sure I can make it. It wasn't easy without a snowplow, but Thomas was determined. He pushed and he pushed and he pushed. Thomas was trying as hard as he could, but there was just one snowdrift after another. Finally, Thomas and Toby were pulling into the village station. Thomas whistled and the villagers cheered when they saw their beautiful tree. Hurrah, they said, hurrah! The next day, the Fat Controller sent for Thomas. Thomas was worried. What would the Fat Controller say about his broken snowplow? But the Fat Controller wasn't cross. He was very pleased. The villagers had a wonderful feast, he said. You were very brave to take on that snow without a plough. Thank you, sir, said Thomas happily. As you know, continued the Fat Controller, there are no spare snow ploughs, so you'll just have to do without yours for a while. Oh, thank you, sir, grinned Thomas. It was winter on the island of Sodor. The snow covered fields and railway lines. All the engines were hard at work except Percy. Come on, Percy, this isn't time to have a rest. I'm stuck, moaned Percy, and my funnel's freezing up. Driver's sent for help. Ha, huffed Thomas and went on his way. Later, Thomas had to help clear snow by a tunnel, but it was too deep and he got stuck. Thomas was very cross. Snow is nothing but trouble, he moaned. Rusty was close by. Driver says that this winter is just about as bad as the worst winter of all. How worst? asked Thomas. I'll tell you, replied Rusty, and the little engine did. Scarlowy was working the line to the slate mines in the mountains. When the snow came, it was difficult to work. They used the snow as a double buffer zone to help stop trucks skidding through to the ravine. One day, Scarlowy set off to the mines with some empty trucks. Meanwhile, there was trouble at the mine. The winch that hauls the trucks up and down wasn't working properly. Scarlowy had reached the ravine. High above him were the mine yards. That snow looks dangerous, said his driver. The sound of your engine and the trucks could cause an avalanche. I'll set off an emergency cap and see what happens. Scar Lowy watched as his driver prepared it. Then they ran over the cap. The bang echoed round the gorge. Nothing happened. Good, said his driver. All's well, we'll have a cup of cocoa and then make our way. But high above them, all was not well. A long line of full trucks was about to be winched down the slope. They had just started their journey when some empty trucks became derailed. The winch groaned. Break it! Snap it! shouted the trucks. And they did. On, on, on! Faster, faster! they giggled. The snowbank and buffers will stop him, said a workman. But he was wrong. The trucks plunged into the ravine. Scarlowy and his driver heard the noise and looked up. Avalanche! they cried. When the snow plume cleared, there was no sign of Scarlowy. He was buried deep inside the high drift blocking the ravine. And then came the funny part. What's the funny part about an avalanche? asked Thomas. Well... 
No one knew that the heat from Scarlowe's engine had helped to make an igloo. It's a snowball. It's a snow house. It's an engine. They cleared away the ice only to find Scarlowe's driver and fireman drinking cocoa as if nothing had happened. Luckily for them, but it just goes to show you can't trust trucks. Or snow, said Rusty. The men had just cleared the snow away from him when Gordon puffed by with his machine. Hey, look out, there's snow about, laughed Gordon. He stopped by the tunnel and wheeshed loudly. Then it happened. Uh-uh. Help! cried Gordon. If Scar Lowy survived a snowfall and laughed, surely a big proud engine like you can do the same, chuckled Thomas. <laughs> moaned Gordon, and then fell as silent as the snow. Winter was coming to the island of Sodor. The morning ground was covered in crisp white frost. Thomas and Emily were happily chuffing up and down the line. Thomas was enjoying pulling Annie and Clarabelle. He thought he was doing a grand job. But Emily had other ideas. She thought he could be doing an even grander job. So Emily decided to help Thomas by telling him what he was doing wrong. When she saw him puffing down the branch line, she cried out, Slow down, you are going too fast and bumping your passengers. Later, Emily saw Thomas by a bridge. He had stopped to take on water and was talking to some children. Stop talking to the children, said Emily. You are working and they will make you late. I'm never late, said Thomas huffily. There's always a first time, said Emily cheerfully, and she puffed away. Thomas was cross. He loved talking to children and thought Emily was being a big bossy buffers. Annie and Clarabelle agreed. I am never going to listen to Emily ever, ever again, said Thomas. So there. The next morning, a sleepy Thomas had to leave Tidmouth Sheds bright and early. He was to collect some trucks from the quarry and take them to the docks. Later that morning, the fat controller arrived with a new weather report. There is snow on the way. You must all have your snow plows fitted. Excuse me, sir, said Emily, but Thomas has already left for the quarry. Then you must find Thomas and tell him Sir Topham wants him to wear his snow plow. So Emily puffed away to get her snowplow fitted. The workmen fixed Emily's snowplow on in no time at all, and she set off to find Thomas. Emily was very happy. She was looking forward to telling him what to do. Thomas was taking on water at Maithwaite Station. Emily puffed up in front of him. She blew her whistle, but Thomas didn't say hello. She just wants to boss me again, grouched Thomas. Thomas, she called. You must go and get your snowplow fitted. Thomas could hear what Emily was saying, but pretended he couldn't. He thought he was being very clever. So Emily tooted even louder again. You must go and get your snowplow fitted, she cried. Bother snowplows, said Thomas, and bother Emily anyway. The weather is perfectly fine. And he puffed away as fast as he could. Thomas delivered the trucks to the quarry then set off to collect the cream from the dairy. Everything was going well. But soon the clear blue sky was eaten away by dark clouds. 
They look like snow clouds to me, said his driver. And he was right. Soon big flakes of white snow began to fall. Then the snow gathered into drifts and covered the tracks. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas as his wheels began to slip. Snow fell all over the island. Emily cut safely through the drifts with her snowplow. Thomas will be in trouble now. Emily was right. Thomas was working harder and harder, but he had to go more and more slowly. We can't go on, said his driver. Thomas pulled to a slow, sad stop by a signal box. And his driver went for help. It snowed and snowed. Thomas felt very cold and twice as miserable. Then he heard the sound of an engine. Thomas was delighted until he saw who his rescuer was. It was Emily. I told you to go and get your snow plough, she said. Now look what has happened. Thomas was still cross. You should say sorry for bossing me about. I am sorry, said Emily. Sorry you didn't listen to me. Emily and Thomas chuffed into Tidmouth sheds. The fat controller was waiting. He did not look happy. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once, said the fat controller sternly. You must learn to listen. Thomas felt bad. He didn't know it was the fat controller who wanted him to wear his snowplow. Emily felt bad too. She didn't like seeing Thomas in trouble. I'm sorry, sir, said Emily. I forgot to tell Thomas it was your idea. You mean I have two engines that don't listen, boomed the fat controller. Well, I never. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once. Soon the work was finished and Thomas was wearing his snowplow. Thank you for owning up, said Thomas. You are a very good friend. That's all right, said Emily. You're a good friend too, but next time, if you want to stay out of trouble, just do what I say. Even Thomas had to laugh. Thomas's Frosty Friend. The winter holiday season is a very busy time on the island of Sodor. Percy has more mail to deliver. Gordon has more visitors aboard his express. And Thomas has very important jobs. One morning, Thomas had to go to Brendam Docks. I must pick up the logs for Farmer McCall, he puffed. Percy was waiting at the signal when Thomas arrived. He was very excited. Look what's over there, Thomas, peeped Percy. Thomas looked. The children were excited. I've never seen such a big snowman. <laughs> Neither have I, tooted Thomas happily. The signal changed to green and Thomas steamed away. Suddenly, a strong gust of wind lifted the snowman off the ground, away from the children. The snowman was a snowman balloon. Thomas didn't see the guide ropes catch on his buffers and get caught there. And he didn't know the balloon was now following him. Thomas stopped at the level crossing. Suddenly, the children's snowman was there in front of him. Thomas didn't know a snowman could dance in the air. What are you doing here, Mr. Snowman? cried Thomas. Mr. Snowman said nothing. 
You must go back to the children, tooted Thomas. They'll be very sad without you. Thomas raced away from the crossing. If I puff fast, chuffed Thomas, Mr. Snowman will never be able to follow me. Thomas arrived at Brendam Docks. James was there delivering coal. Thomas, what are you doing with that snowman? He snorted. Oh, no. Suddenly, the snowman danced in front of Thomas again. Mr. Snowman, I told you to go back to the children. Why are you still following me? Thomas steamed off as quickly as he could. He hoped the snowman wouldn't follow him. Thomas, called James. Why do you have a giant balloon tied to your buffers? But Thomas didn't hear him. Farmer McCall was waiting on the platform. Thomas wished to a halt. Thomas, he exclaimed. What are you doing with that snowman? Oh, no, tooted Thomas. Suddenly the snowman danced in front of Thomas again. Mr. Snowman, I told you to go back to the children. Why are you still following me? Farmer McCall didn't understand. And Thomas didn't know how to tell Farmer McCall about his frosty friend. Thomas steamed off as quickly as he could. He hoped the snowman wouldn't follow him. Thomas, called Farmer McCall, why do you have a giant balloon tied to your buffers? But Thomas didn't hear him. Thomas had to stop at the signal at Maithwaite Station. Emily was picking up passengers. Emily could see the snowman bobbing about behind Thomas. Thomas, laughed Emily. What are you doing with that snowman? Suddenly the snowman floated in front of Thomas again. Mr. Snowman, I told you to go back to the children, cried Thomas. Why are you still following me? Thomas steamed off as quickly as he could. He hoped the snowman wouldn't follow him. Thomas, whistled Emily, why do you have a giant balloon tied to your buffers? But Thomas didn't hear her. He didn't know how to make Mr. Snowman go back to the children. Then he had an idea. I'll hide, puffed Thomas quietly. Thomas chuffed into a lonely siding. He couldn't see the snowman. I think Mr. Snowman has gone back to the children, Thomas tooted. Suddenly a gust of wind blew hard. Mr. Snowman danced in front of Thomas again. He was still following him. I must tell the Fat Controller what has happened, cried Thomas. I need his help. And Thomas raced off. Thomas puffed back into Maithwaite Station. Farmer McCall and the Fat Controller were there. Please, sir, peeped Thomas. I don't know what to do. I've tried to tell Mr. Snowman to go back to the children, but he has followed me everywhere. And he still is, laughed the Fat Controller. The Snowman is a balloon, Thomas. And he is caught on your buffers. He is following you because you are pulling him. A balloon, whistled Thomas. I thought snowmen were always made of snow. Thomas felt very happy. Now he could take Mr. Snowman back to the children. The children were delighted to see Thomas and Mr. Snowman. They cheered and cheered. And Thomas 
was very happy to have returned their frosty friend.